Hey guys, it's Sean Evans here at Back to the Movies and today I'm off to London. It's 7 o'clock in the morning again. I'm getting used to these times. I'm going to be jumping on a train to London to go to the BFI IMAX Cinema to check out the upcoming Prop Store live auction exhibition where Prop Store showcase some items that are going to be going under the hammer in the weeks to come, including movie props and costumes from some of the biggest Hollywood films around. So I can't wait. So I'm going to jump on a three-hour train. Oh, I'm on a slow train this morning and I'll see you when I get there. We're here at Waterloo Station after a three hour journey, but before I go to the exhibition, priorities. Okay, now that that's filled a little hole, it's time to go and look at some movie props. I recognize that straight away from Fallen Kingdom. Suicide Squad Limited Edition Autograph Print Signed by Margot Robbie the Police Officer's Uniform from the Fifth Element Submarine Key from Austin Powers Let's go Solid Gold I don't even want to know where that track has been. Okay, we're here with CEO Stephen Lane of the Prop Store of London here at the live exhibition here in the BFI IMAX in Waterloo. Stephen Lane, thank you for joining us today. Oh, thanks for coming down again, Sean. It's always a pleasure to see you, man. It is. Every year I always say to you, Stephen, we need to do bigger, we need to do better. We go down and the next year you always do bigger and you always do better. So <laughs> tell me, what's the secret? Oh, man, you put some pressure on my shoulders right now. I think that we've just got to the point where we're interacting with the community in such a, a passionate manner and people are really seeing results from our auctions year on year that as we're sort of even now launching this one or, or in the final preparations last couple of weeks of this auction coming out people are consigning to us right now for next year's auction uh, we're actually going to have our first mixed content entertainment memorabilia live auction in los angeles in april so we've got a lot of people in america who are consigning in for that and they just love the experience they enjoy the experience they can see that we're hugely passionate about this material and we're fully engaged with it and so they like that ride rather than just feeling like more of a commercial transaction. So it's really the consigners, the people who contribute the content to our auction that manage to make it such an exciting event for us all. Brilliant. Well, my pre-planned marker where you're standing right now is perfectly placed in front of this incredible Jurassic Park collection of memorabilia, and especially the skull straight over <laughs> your left shoulder right there. Where on earth did that come from and how on earth did that get you? Yeah, I mean, that's an interesting point. I mean, it's, it's you know, you're asking where it's come from. Sometimes it's spawned through our activity and our actions. So in that particular instance, we thought, where did they end up at the end of production? You know, what, what actually happened with those? Were they made by the production company for the film? Were they rented in? Um, which is sometimes the case with something as specialised as that and that was actually the situation so we tracked down the company who made them for the film uh, a lovely gentleman out in the States and uh, you know his passion is all about going out and digging up real dinosaur fossils and bones and then reconstructing them to rent them for museums and events and exhibitions and so we got in contact with him and had a chat with him he's like yeah sure I've got a five foot T-Rex skull and I've also got a 30 foot other dinosaur skeleton and a 20 foot and also um, a velociraptor as well and if you just look over this way a little bit, this little fellow here is actually a full-size adult velociraptor. 
And that's going to be quite a surprise to a lot of people, especially when we've all been sort of brought up on the uh, Jurassic Park velociraptors of the past. And actually that was put into the latest film by these guys, just as a little nod to the fact that that's actually what a velociraptor looks like, not quite like the Stan Winston of the first yes, movie. Yes, the Stan Winston, we're on steroids sort of. Yeah, <laughs> we, I mean, which, is, which is a great thing and it looked phenomenal, but yeah. that's that's a full scale add on velociraptor right there. Wow, yeah. okay, so when you've got films such as Back to the Future, you've got Jack Nicholson's Axe from the Shining, you've got Star Trek, you've got Star Wars. Uh, what is it that appeals to the fans to come back every single year to keep bidding and to keep going and to keep buying more and more memorable films and in addition um, is there any new films that you're going to be adding to the collection other than the, the iconic ones have you got the more independent films and things planned along the way in the catalogue yeah absolutely I mean you've asked a number of questions there and I think you know what is it that engages with collectors that's a very personal question that's, that can only be answered by the individual really you know I'm specifically uh, passionate about Star Wars as most, most of your viewers will probably know that if they've heard me speak previously. Um, but it, for, for a lot of other people, it's about the journey that they've been on during the period of time that they might have watched that film. So they're sort of reflecting back on the nostalgia aspect of an acquisition. So, you know, if they went to see Superman, maybe with their mum and dad and their brother and sister, whatever it might have been at one point, and had a really fun time and really enjoyed the moment and then engaged with all the merchandise that was around for Superman, they might want to come back and revisit that to, to, to recapture a moment in time. So I think for every collector, there's going to be a different answer. I think we definitely have some amazing standout pieces, like some of the items that you've mentioned there, the Holy Hand Grenade of Antioch, uh, which is certainly one of the favorites that's been picked up on to Today and, and previously since we uh, did our press release uh, from Monty Python and the Holy Grail, uh, actually made of a toilet system bullcock, no less, classic Monty Python prop. Um, William Wallace's double-handed broadsword from um, Braveheart, as you say, great Star Wars stuff, the original Stormtrooper helmet from A New Hope. Um, but we also have a lot of material that's relevant to maybe entry level or sort of lower level collecting. The lower level is the wrong way to phrase that actually, but just more affordable level, I think. And that's something that's always been part of the prop store philosophy. If you go on our website, and if you look in our auction catalogues, you're always going to see items that are in there at the low hundreds. You know, sometimes, in fact, on our website, 10 or 15 pounds. And it's very, very important to me that we continue that ethos, that everybody should feel that the content is accessible to them. Sure, the media focus is very often about some of the most valuable items, but actually we want to ensure that everybody can have a look at this and go, yeah, I can own that piece of movie history, whether it be 10 pounds, 100 pounds or into six figures. Absolutely. Now, being a huge self-admitted um, film geek there, Stephen, you walk amongst this collection and uh, before it goes on to exhibition on display to the public, do you actually spend some secret time alone with the items, having <laughs> lightsaber battles in the office? Secret time and, uh, alone with them. Like, <laughs> without that sounding dodgy, of course. I do get asked quite a lot whether I wear the costumes mm. and the answer is almost never. I'll say almost never. There's a couple of caveats in there that we're not going to talk about today, but uh, <laughs> almost never. You know, yes, I, I love, I love handling this stuff, and that's where I'm very, very lucky. You know, this is a, a hobby that went out of control. This is something that has become my livelihood. It's become all immersive. It's become my life, and I treasure so many moments with some of these phenomenal pieces of movie history. And I'm so lucky because even if I don't get to own them all, and I'm tell you I would like to own a lot of them I mean the Stormtrooper helmet here is better than what I have in my collection um, it's just that experience that I managed to get is is awesome so handling it preparing for something like this um, free to enter preview exhibition that we're standing in right now is is great fun because we're sort of understanding what will work and what how we can create a narrative within the environment that people are going to engage with and so that's just you know off the charts for me and I love it Brilliant. So for everybody watching, Stephen, please tell everybody where they can check out the auction, what the dates are, and the most important question of all, what was your favourite item amongst this entire collection? Okay, so the auction takes place on September the 30th and October the 1st. This year it's a two-day auction. It's 900 lots, so it's actually bigger than any other auction that we've ever put together. And it's actually the biggest entertainment memorabilia live auction that's ever been staged within Europe. Um, the auction will run each day from about 1 p.m. through to probably about 7 or 8 p.m. in, uh, in the evening. Um, it's live, so you can come to the Odeon BFI IMAX here at Waterloo and you can sit in the comfy IMAX cinema seats, eat some popcorn, have a beer and do some bidding. Or alternatively, everything will be streamed live online as well, so you can just sit back in the comfort of your own home and click the button to bid. Um, 
when it comes to the favorite item that's a really <laughs> tough question man i mean there's just some wonderful wonderful items here i think that uh, as i said before star wars is uh, right up there at the top of the tree for me i think the stormtrooper helmet is one of the most exceptional a new hope stormtrooper helmets we've seen what i love about that piece is the fact that it's been buried for nearly 40 years collectors haven't even known that it exists until very very recently and the fact that it's screen matches to a sequence on the tentative four where leia's confronted by vader for the first time it's one of the flanking stormtroopers that are next to layer there i think it's going to take it man um, it's going to take it but there's many close seconds you know the 89 keaton bat suit for example i mean what an amazing thing in the joker's costume and the, the weapons the guns it's all great <laughs> and that was me thinking you're going to say it was austin powers uh tracking easy. device yeah, okay, easy. Yeah, you're <laughs> we're going to call that for a moment there <laughs> yes i'm sure you have to reword the the phrasing of that description in the catalog that might have been rewritten a couple of times to make sure we weren't going to offend anybody absolutely <laughs> Stephen lane of the prop store thank you very much for your time pleasure Supergirl miniatures, Christopher Reeves autographed special effects baseball, Krypton energy crystal. Taxi cab, model miniature, and multi-bus. This was one of the first costumes that I ever saw at a prop store exhibition in Torquay, in the Torquay Museum. And this was on display there. It was the first movie prop uh, costume I ever saw. And it's, it's back again, and uh, up for sale. Definitely recognise that. <laughs>